50 years ago, on the 21st of October 1966, the eyes of the world turned to a tiny coal mining village in South Wales. Disaster struck suddenly this morning at the small Welsh coal mining village of Aberfan, near Merthyr Tydfil. Triggered by heavy rain, a fast-moving landslide of colliery waste engulfed a farm, a row of terraced houses and classrooms here where Pant Glass Junior School stood. It was the last day before half-term holidays. 144 people died in the disaster. 116 of them were children. Never in my life have I ever seen anything like this. I hope that I shall never ever see anything like it again. We hear from two people speaking for the first time about the day that changed their lives. Confusion. Unbelievable. Everybody was standing around, bewildered. And I joined them. And with music and song from across Wales, including the Abba Van Hymn, performed by the Chalky Male Voice Choir. The mining villages of the Welsh valleys are close-knit communities and that's been their strength through many tough times. But the 21st of October 1966 was a tragedy like no other. One of the church ministers of Aberfan who lost his son that day later spoke of his own enduring faith in God. I am certain, he said, that nothing can separate us from his love. And it's with this in mind that we begin today's programme with a hymn, Love Divine, set to that sublime Welsh melody, Blaen Wern. Half a century ago, on the day of the Abba Van disaster, television cameras captured a community in shock. One of those interviewed just hours after the tragedy was Irving Penberthy. He was a minister here at the Zion Methodist Church. 
What can a man in your position, a man of God, do in the face of a disaster like this? Well, I admit that I'm, I'm bewildered. I haven't taken it all in yet. All I can say is that I'll be able to give comfort later on because there's a storm of sorrow that's going to break on this village. A very close, friendly village was Abravan. And when I went there, I felt at home right away. It had been raining all that week, heavy rain. I remember setting out that morning. On the way, several emergency vehicles passed me. I didn't take much notice because there were often accidents at the mines. And then a thought came to me, you must turn back. You must turn back. Looking back, as far as I'm concerned, it was the voice of God. Confusion. Unbelievable. There was scores of people, like ants swarming around. Everybody had turned out to dig at this slurry. And I felt that I must stay with the people as, as a minister to talk with them, pray with them, hold their hand. And that's what I did. I think there's an air of resignation which is stealing over the village. An ominous quietness is descending. I've been able to go into quite a number of homes and pray there, and they've been glad of prayer. Mr. Pemberley, I think that prayer is probably the only thing that any of us can rely upon this evening. Well, this is what everybody seems to say. We're so helpless, we can't do anything but pray. Thank you very much indeed, sir. It was my privilege to be at the Bethania Chapel where the little bodies were brought and washed by the dedicated staff in the vestry. This is something I have not spoken about for 50 years because it stirs me so much. I went in with many of the fathers, one by one, where the little bodies were laid out on the pews, covered with a blanket. And we cried and cried and cried. It was no time for words. Words failed us. And as grown men, we cried without shame. And I cry still without shame. I was privileged to go in with them in their darkest hour. And I couldn't have done it without the hand of God on me. That I do know. A whole array of hearses collected the bodies and took them up to the cemetery. I remember that our singing was tremulant and much deep breathing and groping, yes. But we did our best for those those children. <laughs>